I just don't even know where to start. <laughs> So let's start where I left off, which was I was going back to San Antonio. We, we, we were going back to San Antonio because of island fever. So, and I'll insert pictures and stuff to get you kind of an idea of how that was. Um, tr if you haven't traveled by air during the pandemic, it is a totally different experience from normal. So we travel with masks. Um, you have to travel with your mask the whole flight. Um, here I didn't have, like, we, I couldn't find, and not that I really, really looked because I've been home, but I couldn't find like disposable face masks. Um, I had made a couple which are the ones that you're seeing, um, like the fabric ones, which are great, except I used like little hair ties for the ears. So a three hour flight was kind of just trying on the ears. It really gives you a perspective to see, I mean, the flight was three and a half hours. So our healthcare workers who are using N95, surgical masks, face shields, scrub caps, and a gown on top for eight plus hours a day really puts into perspective um, what that's like. When we left, our borders were closed here in the Bahamas. And the airport here in Nassau was empty. It was the only flight back into the U US. We flew JetBlue to Fort Lauderdale which is not our normal route back home, but that was the only flight out. Um, so we took that, all was well there. It was a pretty empty flight. And then our, we have family in Miami. So they drove up to Fort Lauderdale, picked us up, brought us down to Miami, and we had like a six hour layover, which was kind of, it was good because it, it it broke up a little bit of my anxiousness to see like people and familiar people, family, um, that helped a lot. So it was actually a very like pleasant layover. And Gaspacho got to play with literally a bag of tennis balls and like found all of the balls in the whole entire world. I think I have a video and if not a picture or both. So I may insert here. From there, so like I said, I think it was like a six hour layover in Miami. Then we took our night flight from Miami to San Antonio direct. That flight was full, 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 full. So I went from one like empty, ominous experience to a semi-busy Miami airport. Not completely busy, but it was significantly more busy than what I went through here in Nassau and you know like it was for me kind of the first eye-opener of seeing people just kind of doing their thing so um I can't really speak to how it is right this second I can speak to two weeks ago but I'll get to that point later when we got to the Miami airport you could see just people with good energy it was not so dark and ominous um some with masks, some without, even though there's like clear sign that says like masks required while you're in the airport. So it was the first kind of eye opening experience coming into the US. So it was like, oh wow, okay, got it. Um, when we got to San Antonio, we landed super late and we stayed at my in-laws house. So I didn't get to see my family until the next day because it was just, late and I want to say it was a weekday too. They had to work the next day. So I saw them the next day. Um, let's see. First thing I did, the 
following day was Starbucks. <laughs> I had to get my Starbucks, which I got Starbucks literally every single day I was in the United States. Every single day. I am not ashamed. Um, I 100% understand now what it's like to be kind of, you know, I want to say deprived, but when you don't have something available and then you come into contact with it and you're like, just the little things in life, every single day I had Starbucks. Every single day. Um, I didn't have any issues with Starbucks. They, we would do like the mobile order pickup, go in with your mask, pick it up, go, little to no contact with people. Then let's see, in San Antonio, I don't know about now, I haven't even really followed the news in terms of like which are the worst cities in the US with COVID, but at the time that I had arrived, San Antonio I think was the top number, I think it was the number four city in the US for fastest growing rate of COVID. Um, so, and my stepmom works uh, so my stepmom works directly in the hospital with covid positive patients my sister works in the hospital she doesn't work directly with covid positive patients but she's another one that's wearing like the triple layer masks and all <laughs> the stuff going on my dad works in a nursing home thank goodness nobody has gotten sick there none of the residents at the nursing home but my my side of the family is very uh, healthcare oriented and in direct contact with patients and just healthcare in general. Whereas my husband's side of the family is business oriented. So, and he has his 80 plus year old grandmother at his parents' house right now. So we treated her like a precious crown, crown jewel. And we had decided because, I mean, what's the, not what's the point, but for me personally and my mental health and just physical well-being to be in San Antonio and in my in-laws house and not being able to see my family in the same city while may not be the most responsible thing I can say that I didn't care I didn't care I had to go and see them so I did see my family um, who everybody is super careful super super careful everyone does their protocols everyone everyone is doing what they can and so then what we ended up doing is we divided my husband stayed at his in at his in-laws no at his parents house a thousand percent of the time and came to visit my family maybe twice i would stay the night at my parents house and go and visit. It was like back to the dating games. <laughs> the dating games, the dating games and days, dating days. So I would go and visit my husband and I would sleep in the guest bedroom <laughs> away from him. And I was completely masked all the time and socially distant from everyone. I basically pretended like I was infected. I was an infectious disease walking in there and my only goal in life was not to kill grandma. <laughs> That's it. I don't want to kill the grandma. So anyway, we made it through all of that. Um, I had a really, really nice time in San Antonio. I realized how miserable I was here in the Bahamas by going to San Antonio. And I know that that doesn't quite make sense maybe, but I guess the way that I can explain it is my self, I guess the way that I am, is that I put on a very strong mask and I go through cruise control. So here it was just routine to basically wake up every day, do what was needed, whatever was needed that day, which is bare minimum, and coast through life and basically stitch as if it was my job. If it weren't for stitching and it weren't for the floss tube community and the Instagram community, I think that I would have been much worse off. Um, but no, I didn't realize how miserable I was until I got to San Antonio. And then I realized how miserable I was. Because we here in the Bahamas were, at that point in time, 
pretty much on lockdown. They were just opening the first few phases of um, restaurants, outdoor eating, um, back to normal hours, businesses, beaches opening up uh, with precautions, but things were opening up and then they had opened up their borders. So that was all fine and dandy. Um, but we were in the US while everything was kind of opening up here in the Bahamas. So I really have lived the lockdown life for, at that point, it was from March until June, is that right? I think, March until June, complete basic lockdown mode for me. So going to San Antonio, they had just implemented the mask ordinance on the business side. So there, at that point in time, the governor had said, you cannot force a person to wear a mask. Um, it is a person's right to wear a mask. However, we will leave it, this is my interpretation, we will leave it to the cities and the businesses to do what they want to do to keep their customers safe. So in San Antonio, they did like a business ordinance and it basically said if no mask, no service, basically, but from the business end. So it was this loophole where you're not forcing a person to wear a mask, but if you want the service, you have to wear a mask. I only went to Starbucks, Joanne, Target, and a hobby like Warhammer paint store for my dad to go and pick up paints there and I went to Ikea. I highly recommend not going to Ikea. So all of the places that I went to, I felt very safe. I was very careful. I was constantly sanitizing it. It was like a wash and wash out. Um, I used to work in the hospitals and wash and wash out is, you know, it was second nature to me. I'm already kind of a hypochondriac and a germaphobe. So when I would go into a store, I would wash in, and when I would come out of a store, I would wash out. Um, and it wasn't like I was on the streets all day. I mean, like those were literally the only outings I went to, and then the only wash in, wash out would be going home. Gaspacho got to meet his cousin, Kimchi, who is another Frenchie puppy, and it was the cutest thing that I have seen in a super long time. Gaspacho is amazing with other dogs and with other humans, and he's just overall an amazing dog. He just is. He's he's such a good dog. Uh, so he took on the like older cousin role of teaching Kimchi how to be a Frenchie because when Kim when I arrived, Kimchi was very wussy. He was very scared of everything, which is completely different from Gaspacho. Gaspacho as a puppy was like, how can I kill myself as fast as possible? My goal was to keep him alive until he was two years old. If I made it that far, I was gonna be a good dog mom. We have made it past the two year mark, so we're good. So from there, let's see. So the kimchi thing was fun. And our time was coming up that we needed to come back home here but we had made a decision to extend two more weeks in San Antonio just to take advantage of the time we were there. My husband really saw how happy I was. Um, he was just like, oh, you're like back to normal. Like I was just, you know, social butterfly. Even though I wasn't going to places, getting out and driving from my house to his house, that was an outing. Going to my Starbucks was an outing. So I had like just these little sense of, sense of purpose. And I got to hang out with all of my family and I had a new routine. I have my siblings. So it's just a different routine, more social, way less isolated than I am right now. So about, let's see, I was scheduled to leave. I don't have the dates and you're on my phone. I was scheduled to leave on a Sunday. And I believe it was Sunday, July 26th was my date to come back. One week before Sunday, the Bahamas announced that they were closing their borders. And they were closing their borders effective Wednesday at midnight. Mind you, 
Even when the borders were open to get back home, I needed a COVID negative test. So I went through COVID testing. No, it wasn't a miserable experience. Um, it was uncomfortable, but it was no big deal. We got our results in a very timely manner. Um, so we were very thankful that all of that was squared away. Well, Sunday happens and the Bahama, the prime minister says that they're closing their borders. So we had to make a decision on whether or not we were going to come back home or stay in San Antonio. It was a very difficult decision. Now, what influenced this decision is one, we are considered expats. We are expatriate workers and we technically have a limited number of days that we should be in the United States. That's one. Number two, my husband's job is supposed to be here in the Bahamas and what he does has to be here. Um, and number three, with them closing the borders, we have no idea when they would open them back up. So if we stayed out of the Bahamas, then we didn't know when we would be able to get back and that could have affected us in the long term. So we made the decision to bump up our trip from Sunday to Tuesday morning, which doesn't sound terrible, but I went into this very angry mode because again, I felt that things that I wanted and have been able to control were out of my control again. It's not a fun experience. 2020 has not been a fun experience for anybody. If I meet one person that says 2020 has been a great year, I don't know what I do, but I haven't met one yet. So it's just like another added 2020 negative experience. I came very grudgingly back to Nassau because like I said, it was one of those like, wow, I'm gonna come back it's peak hurricane season, we'll get to that. And if they're closing the borders again, obviously it's because the cases are going up and how can we control the cases going up? We can't, once they're up, they just kind of keep spiraling. And so it's very likely that we'll go back into a lockdown, hence today, day one, back at square one of lockdown days. Okay, so let's get to got back and took me about a week to transition back into my old routine. Um, I've tried to be positive. I've tried to look at little things and stay happy. It's not easy, but trying. Um, I have been stitching a lot. I will get to that. So then we had rumors of Tropical Storm Isaias. Tropical Storm Isaias was going to blow through here projected and it was just going to be a tropical storm. It got upgraded to a hurricane category one and we had to do our first hurricane. So hurricane prep was interesting. We filled bathtubs, we charged all external batteries, we brought in all of our balcony furniture, all of our plants. We did everything, textbook hurricane prep and Hurricane Isaias blew through here as a strong category one. It was five miles away from being a category two. Uh, nothing in our outdoor broke, <laughs> but since it is me and it is my life and it is my house, on Sunday when my husband went to go turn on the faucet, the faucet in our sink, our kitchen sink, literally broke, like just tipped over. I'll show you pictures here. So that was our hurricane damage, but not from the actual hurricane. It has since been fixed. Our landlord was very good. He came the next day. He had an extra faucet in his stock of extra things and he installed it and we're back to fine. So that happened. And then two days ago, I haven't even been here. So I just turned two weeks of my quarantine, like my health quarantine from traveling. I turned two weeks 
yesterday. So getting back on the island, it wasn't even two weeks and I had to go through a hurricane. And now, as of two days ago, they had allowed, announced that they were going on a complete lockdown again. This is the same complete lockdown that we were in in March, April. I don't even remember, I think March, April. I think it was end of March and all of April. I don't even remember. But what does our lockdown entail now? We cannot leave our house. Um, essential workers and workers that have like special permission, including my husband, can go to the office Monday, Wednesday, Friday until 1 p.m. and then come back home. So he will be working from home again Tuesday, Thursday, which will just go back to the old ways of splitting the house. I'll be upstairs while he's downstairs. We'll meet for lunch and then split again. And then when his day is over, we'll meet again in the common room. Um, grocery stores will only be open Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's just, it's not fun. And I understand, I mean, the ICU capacity, I mean, ICU here is at capacity. The cases just, it's community acquired at this point because our borders are closed. It, uh, I just, I, I wish I had better news and I wish I had better solutions, but there's just no, I feel there's no right way of doing anything right now. So that stinks. Oh, um, another, just kind of, to give you an insight of just another country and how they're handling things. Um, medical offices will only be open to vaccinations and medical emergencies. That's it, so no routine visits. I'm telling you, it's just, it's super strange. And so I went to the grocery store on Monday with the rumored lockdown news. And when I go to the grocery store, there are no eggs. There was very little um, produce and the meats, like just not meats, meats, meats suck here, but just protein, like chicken and that stuff. It was just meh, so I didn't get any because everyone had stockpiled for the hurricane. So it's just, it's a madhouse. People are very angry, people are very upset. Those planes that you hear, like that one, I have no idea what they are. They are allowing like two or three flights to leave Nassau per week. So I think that those planes are the ones that come in empty and leave with whoever wants to leave back to the US and I think Canada. So that was another reason we came back is we do have the option of leaving, but we have decided as a couple that we are going to stay here until we just can't handle it anymore. Our first round at this for me was from January to June, end of June, so six months until I started getting kind of stir crazy. And we are hoping to go back to San Antonio in October and then we'll just play it by ear from there. While I was in San Antonio, you guys are all asking me about my haul. So what I had to do, and I don't quite know how I'm gonna do this right now, but for the haul, I, while I was packing and doing everything because we had moved our trip up, I did like a speed haul video. <laughs> and just kind of like, this is kind of an overview of what I, what I got. Which again, um, my binge, purchasing and shopping, I think was an outlet for how miserable I was feeling. Because although I am a big spender, that compulsive spending and specifically on like stitching products, I can't justify it and I can't rationalize it other than just saying, you know, I think that that was like my new hobby and pastime. So I have been a really good girl since going to San Antonio and physically seeing my haul. And I did bring some stuff home, which I think, yeah, I think I'm just gonna record it now and then I'll just piece it together. 
So let me get my haul and then I'll be back. I do want to sincerely thank all of you for all of your messages, all of your just, you know, comments and love. It, it feels really good to know that there is a community out there when you are physically alone. Um, you're not so alone because you have this like internet community that you've grown really attached to and you guys are great. You guys are super, super great and I am very thankful to have you all and I appreciate all of your messages and good comments and good vibes and all of the positive energy because I do feel it. I do feel it and Gaspacho, although it doesn't look like he feels it, he does too. He's very happy about his fan club. Well, say hi. Say, th thanks everybody for the messages. He's kind of rude. So, um, oh, my ice maker's working really well. I did bring some stuff back to Nassau, quite a bit, to hold me over. I was thinking that is my ice maker pumping. I did bring um, quite a bit of stuff back to Nassau, but I did not bring my entire haul. You guys will see why. Um, and also I had mentioned before that we are kind of in this limbo. We have no idea if we're staying here or not staying here. So I didn't want to bring a ton of stuff just to have to bring it all back again. And then also, 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 I have started, I have a new start. I started a new project. That's a big project. It's a full coverage. And I know that that's going to keep me really busy. And then I just brought lots of like small to medium projects in the event that I have this itch to start something, um, thinking like in terms of staying here till October, if not sooner leaving, but October is kind of the goal. Um, so I guess I'll just jump in. I don't even know how to transition. So in this packing cube, I have some stuff and I put all of these things in a drawer because I have been meaning to record for you guys. So I'm going to look at these things all over again with you because I don't even remember what I brought. Ah, um, if you guys remember correctly, I did the Owl Forest Wonder Monster Wonder Whale back in February. I did that in one over one or a petite point. So in those bingy purchases, I bought two petite point kits. So this one is a pendant and it's a bird. It's super pretty. I got this off of Etsy. I will put it below. And then the other one I got are these flowers. Also a little pendant in petite point. And these are super cool. They come, it's a kit, so I don't have to think. And I was really excited to do those. I thought it was a really unique piece. Plus it's wearable. Yes, birds and flowers. They're so cute. So that I brought. So this is not a purchase that I bought during my manic purchasing. This is before. And this is actually before floss tube, my floss tube life in general. And also, 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 I don't even think I have a picture of it. So this is an Owl Forest Embroidery, the Merman kit. I'll put a picture because I don't have a picture. I pulled it out. They come in boxes, like cardboard boxes, but I stripped the box and took all of it. And it's also a kit. So I just put it all into this little baggie and the baggie goes in the baggie, and so that's what this is. Next, next, next. I kitted this up. This is Heartstring Samplery Brown Bird Biscornu. Loved the colors, love birds, and I have one Biscornu that I've shown a million times. So this would be a second Biscornu. And I paired it so I even put like the little label. I'm planning on doing it on 40 count Tyco and it has all the called for floss, which looks like classic color works and some gentle arts. 
Cute. This one was a cross stitch with Luda influence. So I was binge watching her floss tube collect or floss tubes uh, right before I left and she had this stitched up and I loved it. So this is the Cricut Collection Three Gables. So cute. And again, I fully kitted it with all of my stuff and I have the button pack. So this one I'm planning on doing 32 count doubloon. Picture this plus. This was a manic purchase, but it was so beautiful. This one is Spirit Dancer by Butternut Road. It is this super enchanting wise woman with a beautiful white bird. And she's just, I loved her very much. I have never seen her completely stitched up, but I also kitted her up. And I pulled this fabric for her. This is Color and Cotton Serenade, which is like a purpley gray. Sorry for the glare. In the picture, she stitched on this like khaki color, but I don't know. I, you know, I like to do a spin on things and I think the white will really pop. <sighs> I don't plan on starting her anytime soon because I'm really into my current project, but I have it here in the event that I do want to start it. Just. One of those things where like when you are in a rush and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to like grab stitching projects and make sure that I don't run out of projects. I would never run out of a project. But you just go into panic like I have to bring all my projects. So this made it to my, oh my gosh, if I don't have her with me, I'm going to die. So I feel super bad about this next thing because I have a wonderful viewer follower I have several wonderful viewer followers. One viewer follower sent me this a very long time ago. And I thought that I had put the card in this, but when I rushed out, I didn't. And I feel terrible because I don't remember who this is. So please comment down below. Please tell me who you are because I searched in my Instagram messages and it's just, I know that it was so far back ago that I can't remember. But I had an amazing viewer follower send me this. This is Black Swan, I think Rainforest Angel. There. And this was, I mean, it was, I don't know. She had told me, she's like, I have this. I don't think I'll ever stitch it. It looks like something you may like. I loved it. So she also made it to my, if I go back to Nassau and run out of projects, I need something really fast. So I have her kitted up and the fabric I picked for her, which is also very different from the called for, is Copper Kettle by Color and Cotton. So in the picture, she's kind of on a pink fabric but when I did the floss toss, all of the animals and the angel and every, all the greens really popped on this. Again, the glare, there. Really popped on this copper kettle fabric. So another one where I'm like, well, I'm gonna bring her back to Nassau with me. And if I get an itch for a new start that has not been planned out, She's there. And those are, oh no, those are not. I have a couple more things and I think I have some in my backpack, hold on. So I had mentioned that Skeleton Crew by the Cricut Collection was in my plan starts for this year. Um, so I have Xenia, which is like a Scarlet Witch Woman that I almost have finished. So she is going to be one of the Halloween seasonal stitches that I'm going to finish up. And I wanted to start this one. Hi, how was your nap? Yeah, you slept almost the whole time. 
So I am planning on stitching this on properly primitive, 32 count by under the sea fabric, which is like a gray, green, peach, crazy color looking. He is stitched on green, which I don't know. That may change, but I have more fabric here. So if I do change it, I'll pick something from over here. Do you remember recording for Floss Tube and how you were the star of the show? Do you remember that? I told them that you were an amazing cousin. You're falling asleep while you're sitting. Yeah, am I boring you again? You used to bark. You used to like be super disruptive. Now you just don't care. This was a Luda influence by. This is Merchant Mermaid by Mill Hill. She is completely kitted and the fabric that I chose for her was 32 count shadow. If I picture this close. Me and dark fabrics, like you, you would think I learned after stitching Unicorn Tapestry on Mystic, but no, I decided to go darker because I hate my life. But the greens and the purples should really pop on there and I'm super excited about this one. So that's another super excited, don't have it planned to stitch, but I have it in case that I get an urge to start it. And last, but not least, ah, last, but not least, I have, oh, where are you? This is what I have from it. So this is the New Day, a New Day, the Disney Castle by Thomas Kincaid, The Art of Disney. So this one is kitted. Ah, oh, I have the DMC in a different bag. So Leslie from Under the Sea Fabric dyed me this blue, even weave. So that will be the background. I don't have a picture of it because I just got a pattern. And I don't even have the original pattern with me because I left it in San Antonio. So this is like the copy of my pattern, my working copy, where I checked off all of the DMC and all of the lists and checks and took all of my notes. So, oh, and I think I had shown that I have it here. It comes with, or it, the original kit came with a Stony Creek button that I, are you going to see this? Probably not. I bought on eBay this gold charm Tinkerbell that I'll do in place. It was only like nine or 10 bucks, not a big deal. So with this custom blue, I have to double check and see if this is the blue that I wanna do. I also ordered a different blue from color and cotton, which no big deal. I can have different blues and blues are always needed in the stash of fabrics for future projects. And I just, I think I'm gonna, I don't know. Well, I still haven't even shown you what my new start current whip is. So let's do that. I am currently working on these MCG textiles, The Lion King, Disney Dreams Collection. These are out of print. Uh, I bought this one last year and had it hanging out at my parents house and I finally just got the itch to itch to stitch the itch to stitch it so I started this in San Antonio and I alternated this with tempting teas which is upstairs and I'll show in the next floss tube where I got with that so excuse the black floss that I'm using as back stitching. But this is where I'm at right now. This is, I don't remember when I started it. I started in San Antonio, I did very minimal stitching. Remember that I'm a middle starter. 
So I started here and traveled all the way up to the top left. So I'm finishing up this top left corner to continue moving. <sighs> this is a new clay by Kim. It's not a dragon, it's a scarab beetle. And then this needle minder is from Top Knot Stitcher. Love her stuff. I love these flat wooden ones. I think I mentioned that before. Uh, so definitely check out her shop. And with Clay by Kim, she just opened up her new shop. Um, so congratulations. But I hear she is moving. She posted on Instagram. So we may be dragonless and no needle minders for a little bit. Which is totally fine because... I'm coming up on that ear and I did like an over, I'll insert it here. So let me show you a snippet into my clay by Kings. And these are my babies. These are my clay by Kim dragon needle minders. They're not just dragons, but needle minders. I think that I have tapped out <laughs> from the game. So you guys have fun hunting these guys because my collection for me is a thousand percent more than I could ever want. And this is so much fun. I get to show each one. So are you ready? So I currently have 26 dragons and eight like random needle mine like this. Like that's not considered a dragon, but it's a clay by Kim. So 26 and eight. And I have mentioned several times before, I started with my first purchase in September of last year. I did hardcore dragon hunting, dragon slaying. And I am very happy with my stash. I have no repeat colors, um, no repeat dragons. And now recently, like I had thought, I am seeing the same, not the same, I'm seeing very similar dragons to what I already have. For example, currently, the last few times that I've checked and have not been able to snag, don't worry. And even if I was able to snag, I wasn't going to because one was a purple and I have a purple. And the other one was like an orange and white that looks very similar to my koi dragon. I don't need them. So guess what? Those should go to people who don't have any. So I'm not going to be the person to swipe them all up just because I can get them. So I, basically what I'm saying is I'm pretty much done. So I'm pretty much tapping out to dragon slaying. And that is a public record piece and it's true, it's fact, because I have not purchased, this is my last Clay by Kim. While I was in San Antonio, I have not purchased another Clay by Kim since. So I'm telling you, my spending habits have gone significantly down. I think that this rest of this haul, since it's like miscellaneous stuff, and I wanna have stuff to show for future floss tubes, I'm gonna hold it. I know I'm terrible, but if I give you everything now, then what is there to look forward to? And I'm gonna be here until basically October and I have nothing basically coming in. So here is where I thank you guys again 
for hanging out with me, grabbing your stitching and your coughing and just coughing, coffee, and just hanging out with me again. I very much appreciate all of you and I am very happy to be back. This transition into filming again was a little difficult to start, but you know, it's like riding a bike. As soon as the camera starts going and then you start talking and then you realize how much you have to talk about and then you start rambling. Welcome to my Floss Tube channel. <laughs> I hope to get back on again in the next couple of weeks. Uh, no longer than that. I have nothing else to do. So I'll update you guys on my Lion King piece and I'll show you Tempting Tangles. I'll show you my miscellaneous haul and kind of talk about that a little bit. bit. I have um, a few new products that I want to try before I talk about it so that I can review it. And so yeah, uh, thank you again. Big hugs, stay safe, wear your mask, stay socially distant, let's flatten the curve. To all you mamas and dadas out there, power to you. You guys are amazing and try to be as positive as possible in this terribly negative time. If you need anything, you know where to find me.